a charge of four sticks of dynamite, the two-inch fuse. Two-inch? Yeah, this has to be fast. If that fire backs up into the line, the pipe will explode. How's that dynamite charge coming along? Just about sent, Roy. the break. What is it? I don't know. Head out! Head out! Hi. Hi, Splinters. Oh, hello, Roy. Hi, fellas. Hi, Splinters. What are you doing here? Well, I'm working for the government now. Me and my team hired out that scientific camp. Our job is to haul in these rockets after they've been fired. Oh, pardon me, Roy. Here's the chief of the guards at the experimental station. This is Roy Rogers, Mr. Travis. How you do, sir? Nice to know you, Roger. So that's what this is, a rocket. They sure picked a poor place to land. Yeah, it sure did. Dr. Manning isn't going to like this. My company isn't going to like this hole being busted in the pipe and burning all this oil, either. I wouldn't worry about that, Rogers. This project will see that your company's reimbursed for the loss. Woo! <laughs> Hot. All right, Splinters. Let's get the wagon, salvage what we can, and get out of here. Yes, sir. Get the welding equipment, boys. We better fix this as fast as we can. Uh. You know, Roy, I fixed this rig all up by myself. Yeah? Based it on Newton's theory of gravitivity. Well, you know Shakespeare said that if you run enough ropes through enough pulleys that you could lift the world? Of course, that is, if you had something to hook it to, like, uh, oh, let me see, like, The uh, moon or the sun? Yeah, the moon or the sun. 
Now, listen, you just go over there and say giddy up to them horses when I tell you to. Okay, I'll say giddy up. All right, now stand clear, you fellas, because, boy, when he says giddy up, that rocket's just gonna sail right up in the air and land in this crate like a baby. All right, Roy, swing her aboard. Roy, let me down! Hey, Roy! Bad. That rocket won't do him much good now. Yeah, that mechanism. The most advanced in the world today. All burned up. A lot of people would like to have that mechanism. It had been worth a lot of money. A lot of money. No trespassing, mister. Well, I see the man that runs the camp. I'm from the Camwell Oil Company. You got a letter? No, I just happened to be riding by. What seems to be the trouble, guard? My name's Camwell. Dr. Manning. How do you do, sir? I own a small oil company down the valley. You've got a big spread here, and I thought you might be interested in buying some oil for heating and fuel. In as much as I deliver it myself, I can save you some money. Oh, we might be able to use some of that. See my daughter over in her tent. Thanks. It's all right, guard. Miss Manning? Yes. Well? Your father suggested that I speak to you regards buying some oil. I can make you a good deal. I happen to know that projects like these are anxious to save money. You're right about that. We need quite a bit for the cook stoves, and the nights here get very cold. Could you deliver us 500 gallons in three or four days? You bet I can. Ten cents under the market price delivered. And that'll be fine. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Look, Dr. Manning, she's all burned up. Your missile dropped in an oil pipeline and there was a fire. Come on, take a look at it. Oh, this is the most confounded piece of luck. Why, this thing is absolutely worthless. Thousands of dollars destroyed by a stupid accident and probably not an instrument left inside that'll tell us anything. Next time we'll fire in a different direction. It'll take a week, maybe two weeks, to get another rocket ready. All that time wasted. Well, it was sort of tough luck for the oil company, too. They had their pipelines busted and lost a lot of oil. Well, uh, unload it over there, Splinters. Frankie, go to the pipeline office and make arrangements to pay for the damages that we're responsible for. And do it now. Certainly, J.D. Did anyone from the experimental camp show up? Not yet. Well, when they do, you and the boys be on your best behavior. We don't want anything to happen to that claim. And this thing's kind of plugged up. Give me about 70 pounds pressure and we'll clear it out. All right. The office is just around the corner, Miss Frankie. Hey, wait! What is it? Don't walk under a ladder. That's bad luck. That's a medieval superstition. Yeah, but there are four of them. Utterly ridiculous. Hey, Roy! Get off! Hey! <laughs> Gee, I didn't see you standing there. You did that deliberately. You pointed that hose right at me. I saw you. No, I didn't. It was an accident, ma'am. My father will be very annoyed at this. Your father? Yes, Roy. This is Miss Manning. <laughs> How do you do, Miss? Manning? Well, now we've done it. We? You certainly have. I came here to help you file a claim, and this is the treatment I get. Gee, the pipeline, I'd like to buy you a new dress. What size do you wear? Never mind. Oh, I'd say about a 16. A 12. And the boot's about 10s and a half? Six double A. Splinters, take her over to the beauty shop and tell them to give her the works. I sure will, Roy. <laughs> well, come on, fellas, get going. Well, what are we going to use for money? Charge it. Okay. Okay. Boy, if this doesn't work, we'll all be fired. I've never been in one of these places before. Neither have I. We want to be made beautiful. I should think so. Oh, come in here. Tell me what happened here. My 
Now look, I can make the young lady look beautiful, but as for you, I can't perform miracles. She can't? Well, that takes care of the claim. All we have to do now is get her to accept it. Well, as you said, Roy, we sure fixed things. This could be a very disagreeable situation. Yeah. She's been over there four hours. I wonder what keeps women in beauty shops so long. Has been a long time. Here comes Splinters. Well, you don't look any better. Well, what did you expect? I have aged a little since you last saw me. Oh, what do you see, Miss Manny? <laughs> <laughs> Say, that's the best job the Mesa Valley Pipeline ever turned out. I should still be angry with you, Roy. I mean, Mr. Rogers. But how can I? These clothes are so beautiful. I'd forgotten what things like this were like. Thanks. Well, the pleasure's all ours, Miss Manning. I'll have your other things cleaned and send them up to your camp. I guess this is as good a time as any to give you this claim. I'll go over it with you in detail if you like. Yeah, who wouldn't? Well, this looks reasonable enough. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry now. I gave Mr. Camwell an order for some oil this morning instead of your company. Camwell? Yeah, that's a new bunch that took over the old Wildcat well in Bar Valley. They must be pumping oil. I better get out there. You see, Miss Manning, the Mesa Valley Pipeline doesn't sell oil. We only pipe it to the nearest shipping point. Oh, I see. Hey, what about having a barbecue up at the camp next Sunday, inviting all the fellas up? Splinters, you know that's impossible. We're so busy, we can't waste time on things like that. Oh, we wouldn't be wasting time. We'd be having fun. Father wouldn't agree with you. He keeps me busy. You see, he always wanted a son. When I came along, he decided to make the best of it. So I became a scientist. I still think there's enough time for both work and play. Perhaps in your business, Rogers, but not in ours. Will you kindly tell me where you've been all afternoon and where you've got those clothes? Roy, this is my father, Dr. Manning. How do you do? I'm sorry, Dr. Manning, but you see, this is our fault. I asked my daughter a question. Please don't interfere. My clothes were accidentally soaked with chemicals. And Roy, I mean the Mesa Valley Pipeline Company bought me these. Well, we're going home immediately where you'll get out of those clothes and give them back to the company. You may not understand this, Rogers, but we're in this part of the country on important business that has to be concluded as soon as possible. In the future, kindly do not annoy us, particularly my daughter. Let's stay here, Bullet. Hey, Camel, there's a stranger coming up the road. I wonder what he wants. Well, it's no secret we moved up here. He's probably looking for a job. Scheller, Brooks. stand at coroner's inquest on him. private property, I could have you arrested for trespassing. If you're Camwell, I came up here to see you. I heard you were pumping, and my company's in the pipeline business. So what? When I want you, I'll send for you. Show this young businessman the gate. All right, throw him out.
I'll leave. But it'll be under my own power. Come on, Bullets. All right, boys, break it up. Give him a hand. From now on, I want a guard on that gate 24 hours a day. Where do you suppose Rogers got the idea we were pumping oil? I don't know. Probably Miss Manning. We're going to make that delivery tomorrow. Delivery? Of what? Oil. 500 gallons. If we expect to pick up one of those rockets, we've got to know what day they're going to fire it. Since this old baby ain't pumping, we're going to have to take it from his pipeline tonight. What are you thinking about, Splinters? Oh, my girl, Effie. What a ranch girl. Spends all her time with cattle. She does? Yeah, she eats with them, sleeps with them, practically lives with them. Don't you ever go see her? Oh, once in a while when the wind's right. Hello. What? It is? Well, I'll get out there right away. Now what? Well, pressure's down in the pipeline between stations four and five. When the boys show up, tell them to stand by. Right. Come on, Bullet. How's it coming? It's about half full. We'll take on a few extra gallons just in case. Brooks. coming up the south road. What'll I do? Do what you've been told. We're not through here yet. Shell are standing guard around the bend. Warning. What is it? It's a rider coming up the road. You stay here. Rogers. He's still alive. Yeah? Well, not for long. He'll bleed to death by morning. Rogers. That's the best break we've had yet. Here's the wallet. We took it like you said. <laughs> that ought to confuse him. Here, keep it. You earned it. Can we fix this break in the line? No, let it run out on the ground. Who cares?
Get out of here. Get out. There's blood on him. Something's the matter with Roy. Get your men together. We've got to find him. Right away. Just a minute, guard. I'm still giving the orders around here. You'll do nothing of the kind. Your cowboy friend is big enough to take care of himself. Now go on. Get out of here. Go on. She must be out of her mind. Get another guard and bring her back. Yes, sir. Here's an interesting item. It says the local officers haven't found the hoodlums that robbed Roy Rogers and left him to die. Too bad that girl found him. Well, at least they think it was robbery. They didn't tie it up with a break in that pipeline. I heard in town the oil company figured it was just a bad repair job. Looks like the boys are ready for you, boss. This is one delivery I'm going to make in person. I guess Rogers snapped out of it. Says you're the doc at the hospital at the rocket camp's gonna turn him loose today. Frankie, wouldn't you like to say a few words in your new presence? <laughs> I want to thank you for the recorder, Roy. You're certainly more than welcome. I know you're as glad as I am to learn that the doctor says you're well enough to leave. Well, I want to thank you and Frankie for the medical care. If it hadn't been for your daughter, I'm afraid you'd be reading about me in the obituary column by now. You're welcome, and you can leave. Thanks. Come on, Bullet. Understands you had an accident, Rogers. That's right, but I'm as good as new now. Frankie, I'll be back this afternoon with a wagon to pick up the rest of my things. Let's go. There's your oil, Miss Manning. You'll find some empty drums down at the end of the street. It's a very interesting place. Yeah, something new every day. As a matter of fact, I'm studying up this science stuff myself. Well, that is my spare time. That's so. Confidentially, I'm now working on a plane that'll fly over 5,000 miles an hour. It'll reach New York in 25 minutes. If you've got a plane that'll go 5,000 miles an hour and get to New York in 25 minutes, how do you stop it? Oh, well, I guess I'll have to hire some guy in New York to figure that out. Oh. Looks like they're getting one ready now. Yeah, we're gonna put that in the air in about a week. We usually fire them around 10 in the morning. Very interesting. Well, I better check on my men. Sure, sure. See you later. There's a rainbow over Texas. There's a sunbeam peeking from behind each cloud. A prairie breeze seems to say out loud, good morning to you. There's a rainbow over... What's the matter, Frankie? Have you lost your mind? I'm sorry, J.D., but I... I know what you were doing. I'm not deaf or blind either. How can you waste your valuable time thinking about a worthless, irresponsible saddle tramp like Rogers? How can you forget your scientific training to become interested in a lowbrow cowpoke? But, J.D., I... And have... that's splinters, that submarginal idiot. Why, if he had twice as many brains as he has, he'd, he'd still be a halfwit. I'm sorry, J.D. What are you going to do, survey the place? No. After the rocket's fired, my job is to plot the trajectory. Then locate it on the chart so you can find it. What won't they think of next? Bring those papers along and you can help. Seconds, Frankie. I'm ready, JD.
231. At 231. Fineman. It's headed right this way. Ain't that dangerous? No, it lands by parachute. I lost a JV. Oh, that's to be expected. You ought to be able to pick it up with your equipment now, Jim. All right. I got it. Four sixty. Four sixty. Five hundred. Five hundred. Starting down at 600. 600. There it is. Headed right over by North Creek. It launches for a three mile an hour breach in this direction. The rocket will be right here. Oh, I know the exact spot. That's up by North Creek. I know these hills just like I know the palm of my hand. Well, where is it? Right there, that callus and the trigger finger. <laughs> we'll have it back in a jiffy, Doc. All right, come on, fellas. Hurry it up, boys, hurry it up. Pick up that parachute. I don't want anything left, not a thread. I still can't figure why this thing's so valuable to somebody. It's a technical matter Dr. Manning's working on. Long-range weather forecasting. With this invention of his, he can predict weather conditions months ahead. You mean for farmers and ranchers? Well, that's one phase. Can also be used in case of military moves, knowing the weather beforehand. The people I represent would pay anything for that, even to sacrificing a few lives. Bring it up to the shack. About ready for the nitro, boss? Yeah, I want to set that booby trap after we get all the instruments out of the rocket. What's all this talk about a booby trap? We got the rocket, didn't we? No, I want my money and I'm through. Getting that rocket was only half the job. The other half's getting rid of that scientific data and the balance of those rockets at the camp. Sort of with nitroglycerin. Yeah. I don't mind a little rough stuff once in a while. After all, that guy has to make a living. But like you said, Dr. Manning's worth a lot to this country. He's worth a lot more to my connections dead. What's the matter, Rex? Are you turning yellow? Go ahead. You know what happens if I drop this thing. Yellow, huh? I'd be doing my country a favor if I had nerve enough to blow us all up. Don't tempt me. was a little squeamish about blowing up the rocket camp. That's the trouble with these guys. You can't trust them. Throw them in the sump hole. Well, here's what we've been looking for. Searched every ant hill and gopher hole in the mesa. Well, I gave you the exact spot it landed. I know you did, and we were there, but the rocket wasn't. The only way I can figure is that the wind blew the parachute off course. It got so dark, we had to give up. Well, have your men stand by, and we resume the search first thing in the morning. I'll break them out at 4 o'clock. Get something to eat and take care of your horses. Yes. Sorry, doctor. 
I have a strong suspicion that Splinters was given the wrong course for the rocket. But, J.D., I'm sure that... I'm sure that you were moping over that Rogers when you should have had your mind on your work. You came up here to help us, not to moon over a cowboy. Now go to your tent. Glad to know that our investigation of the section of pipe at the break proves there's nothing wrong with your repair job. Then you mean it wasn't an accident? No, sir. That break was deliberate. You may have been trying to steal your oil. We're investigating that possibility. Roy, I hope I'm not intruding. Not at all. Frankie, I'd like you to meet Mr. Miller, investigator for the Mesa Valley Pipeline Company. Glad to know you, miss. Well, I'll let you know if anything new comes up. All right. Oh, about that Camwell incident. He must be crazy. I checked that well, and it couldn't produce an ounce. Those casings have been down for 25 years, and he's never replaced them. As far as his business is concerned, <laughs> forget it. Good night. Good night. I hope this is a social call. Roy, something terrible has happened. We fired a rocket this afternoon, and it disappeared, just vanished. J.D. is terribly angry with me because he thinks my mind was on something else, and I miscalculated. But he's wrong, Roy, on it. Couldn't Splinters find it? He knows that country better than anybody. That's just the trouble. He searched until after dark and couldn't find a trace. Have you a map? Sure. Here it is. I'm sure my figures are accurate. And this is where it should have been. Well, I know exactly where that spot is. Out by North Creek. Well, will you go out there with me? I'd like to see for myself. Sure. shoot like it was. Since they'll be looking for that rocket tomorrow. I'm gonna set this thing for 60 minutes. It'll take them 10 minutes to load and 50 minutes to get into camp. Don't anybody jar this rocket. After I've pulled the pin, the slightest movement will start the mechanism. Well, everything looks like it did when we found it. that somebody besides yourself would like to get a hold of that rocket? Very definitely. That's why I'm worried. It's an entirely new type, and most of the computations are in J.D.'s head. If anything should happen to him or an unfriendly power got hold of the instruments inside that rocket, it would be a terrible thing. But who around you here... never can tell. It might be your next-door neighbor. within 50 feet of the place you figured. And it's right out here in the open. I can't understand why they didn't see it. 
Maybe Splinter's had his mind on something else. Say, you, for instance. <laughs> Even so, the guards were with him. They should have noticed. You better get back to camp and tell Splinter to hitch up that team. He did not get out here as soon as he can. I'll stay here as guard. By the time I round everybody up, it'll be daylight before I get back. I'll be here. <laughs> Hi, Roy. Hi, fellas. Well, I'll swear I was by this exact spot at least five times yesterday. Some place it looked like this. See there, I'm a track. Oh, well. Hey, we'll have to put that on the ground so I can swing her up on the wagon. Oh. Ah. I think after all the trouble this thing's caused, it had to land in a place called Sunshine Valley. All right, so let's take it away. Oh, well, all's well that ends well. Happy trails in Sunshine Valley. Happy trails in Sunshine Valley. Happy trails in Sunshine Valley. Where a smile. your rocket, Doctor. Well, Rogers, I'd like to apologize for my attitude. It's just that I've been under such a strain, I... Well, I haven't been myself. But now that we've gotten this rocket back, I'm sure the instruments inside will give us all the data the government wants. Well, I still think there's something fishy about this whole deal. I'm either blind or crazy, but I'll swear on a stack of hotcakes that we passed the same spot where Roy found this rocket yesterday, and it wasn't there. Well, if somebody'd stolen it, I don't think they'd have been kind enough to bring it back later. Hey, Bullet, what are you doing? What are you doing, Bullet? Trying to wreck a government project? Come on, get down off here. Get down. Get down. Well, I guess he just doesn't like rockets. Hey, this must be what Bullet's excited about. Some kind of machinery taken in here. Machinery taking? Well, there's nothing in that rocket that would make a noise of any kind. Are you sure? Look out, Spooners. Oh. <laughs> Gesture, just over a little ticking. Ticking? Time bomb!
back to Camwell and tell him he's going to have to change his plans. I'll stick around and see what happens. Hey, where do you think you're going? Now, get back in that bed. Where's Dr. Manning? He's not back yet. He and the whole camp are out investigating the rocket explosion that almost killed you. And my orders are to see that you stay in this bed and lie quiet. Now, get back in there. You don't understand. This is a matter of life and death. Yeah, who's? Now, just relax until they find out whether or not you got a concussion. Listen, Splinters, that explosion was a booby trap intended to kill Dr. Manning and blow up this camp. Well, who'd want to do that? The same person who stole the rocket and put a time bomb in it. You were right. You did go to the right spot, but the rocket wasn't there. They beat you to it, and that's where they pulled a switch on us. Well, who? I'd say it was Camwell. That well of his is a blind. The oil he sold Frankie was stolen from our pipelines. Gee, then if it's Camwell, and he's a dangerous guy. I'd say he's a dangerous traitor. I'm going out there. You get Dr. Manning and round up all the guards you can and follow me. Come on, Bullet. Come on, boy. Excelsior when you pack those instruments. They're delicate and I don't want anything to happen to them. Boss, I'm going to make sure. He got smart and took the rocket out of camp before it exploded. He's going to be sorry for that. What about the others? Oh, I don't think they're wise yet. All except his pal. But I took good care of him before he squawked. Things are getting pretty warm to stick around here. Oh, Roy, 
Where's Dr. Manning? He hasn't come back yet. Well, how long have I been here? Come on, we got a message to deliver. The shipment's just about ready. Complete. 2,000 gallons. We'll meet you at the place we discussed in about an hour. You all set? Truck will meet us at the old country road. We'll make the delivery there. Come on, Rogers. Get in there and get out of sight. Go on. Get out.
What's the matter, Frankie? Have you lost your mind? I'm sorry, J.D., but I'm... I know what you were doing. I'm not deaf or blind either. How can you waste your valuable time thinking about a worthless, irresponsible saddle tramp like me? I don't think now's a very How good time to say goodbye, Roy. Right? training to become interested in a lowbrow cowpoke? I don't think I it is either. That's Why not? That's don't you hear what he's saying about me in there? Why, if he had twice... Hey, what's going on around, around here, he anyway? He'll be a half -wit. I'm oh. sorry, J.D. <laughs> So long, Frankie. See you. Bye, Doctor. And thanks. Gee, I'm glad Dr. Manning didn't mean all those things he said about me. But I did. What did I ever do? Oh, you want me to tell you? No! Oh.